Hey everyone, I'm Penny from Your Closet, Your Style. Welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we are talking with a professional hairstylist, getting some best tips for us as uh, women, not necessarily over 50, but as you know, I am. Um, so just some tips for our hair and, and our style and how to own your style as it speaks to your hair. So we're go I'm going to introduce Erin here in a minute and then we're gonna go through five, five-ish simple questions and um, I'm sure that you will be inspired by this. So I'm really excited to do this. So Erin L. Ali is with us today, and Erin is a professional stylist here in the West Michigan area at an awesome salon, downtown Grand Rapids, called Bottega Salon. So Erin, welcome. Thank you, Penny. Why don't you tell our stylish friends a little bit about yourself and how long you've been doing hair? Well, um, I've been licensed as a hairstylist for 20 plus years. Um, I've been in the industry um, pretty much uh, full time. Um, took a little break when my kids were little, but still stayed in absolutely, there. Absolutely, um, I'm now in kind of a new phase of my life where I run my own business out of Bottega, okay. and um, full time and uh, going awesome. strong. Yeah. So it's that chapter two thing again, right? Yep. Yep. We all move forward into chapter two as we get a little bit more mature, shall I say? So you guys, we're gonna go through some really simple questions. I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below, or if you have more questions, we will pair back up with Erin and answer those questions for you. But I am excited to get started, so let's get going. Oh, and of course, I don't know if you can see, but the special guest is here again. He really loves to talk about hair too. So <laughs> if you hear noises, I swear it's not me or Erin, it's Stuart readjusting, so you know how that goes. So, Erin, the first question out of the gate is all about owning your style. That's what we talk about here the most um, at Your Closet, Your Style. So, just regardless of my age, what's a great tip for how I can best own my style as it relates to this going on? Well, um, in general, what I try to uh, evoke to my clients um, mm -hmm. at any age, really, is that your hair is an accessory. Um, right. You know, you want to portray um, what you're comfortable with, um, maybe keep up with the trends. Uh, you know, you can change your hairstyle as the accessory with your daily lifestyle, be it, right. you know, work day or right. a casual day. Um, so just, you know, give yourself that um, personal um, flair, be it okay. color or cut, mm -hmm. texture, okay. length. Um, so just really embrace that. Awesome. And I think that kind of holds true even when we're talking about your outfit um, with with other accessories too. I think your hair works the same way. I often talk about nails working the same way. Um, you will feel your best if you feel your best from head to toe. And I'm telling you, you know for me personally when I'm having a bad hair day, <laughs> it reflects on everything I do. So I think that really speaks to what you're saying. It's yes. really, you've got to put your own twist on your hair. Yes. And um, I think we might get into this in one of the later questions, yes. but yes. just because it looks good on my friend Judy doesn't mean that same hairstyle is going to look good on me. I have to feel comfortable. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Great. Yes. Okay, we're going to go on to the next one. Okay, so two, two-parter. Okay. But it's a really important question, I think, right now, too. So I'm going to read it so I make sure I get it right. But if you're on a tight budget, I've got an either-or in two scenarios. Um, where is it best to spend my money? In the haircut or the hair color? And by that I mean if you only have money to get one or the other professionally done, ladies, which one is best? Where's your money best spent? Well, I would say in most cases, each person that could be answered differently. Okay. Um, when it comes to somebody wanting to maintain you know, color as mm -hmm. a great coverage. Okay. Um, I would say um, talk to your stylist about like how can you um, have a real realistic hair color and stretch it out to meet your budget needs. Okay. That might mean um, come in uh, like your routine hair color appointment. Okay. Be it every four weeks and you do a haircut every other visit. Oh. Um, okay. In some cases, I have clients that. You know, they get a haircut every six to seven weeks, and okay. they get a highlight with 
you know, the technique that I might use. Okay. And they get to highlight every other haircut. So okay. if you are on a tight budget, um, even be it like a temporary thing, please consult with your stylist about that because okay. there's really ways to, to kind of go about that in the okay. salon industry. Um, myself personally, I can set up a uh, kind of a goal for your hair <laughs> throughout the year. Right, right, uh, right. You right. know, I could say, okay, well, Penny, um, let's look at this. You don't want to give up your hair color, but we really need to <laughs> keep your cut in, in, you know, in check. Right. So it might mean... Um, coming in, stretching out your hair color an extra week, okay. and then an every other haircut visit. Um, okay. You know, at the end of the year, you might look at that and track it and say, you know what, I actually did have a savings, but I didn't have to give up one or the other. Oh, see, look, she made us be able to do both. And That's I good don't, grammar. as far as I am <clears throat> concerned, I want my, my, as a stylist, I want my client to always stay in my chair. I don't want you to feel compromised, and I don't want you to feel like you're giving something up in your personal style. Okay. So most stylists, as far as I'm concerned, are willing to work with each individual okay. client in that way. Just be up and upfront and honest. Don't feel, you know, worried that oh they won't want me to be around okay. because you are a great asset to us. You know, and in, in general, client, I love that. I just I want everyone to feel like you know you're just as important as the person that can come in. You know, every three every weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> because you know, there's right, that's, right. that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I so love that. There's all, you shouldn't have to compromise. Answer. There's always a way around it. That's a great answer. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, and part two of that is budget again. Uh huh. If I only have a certain amount of money to splurge on something, am I splurging on my shampoo or am I splurging on the styling products? If I have to do either or. Again, I'm not going to say you can. Sophie's choice. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do either or. Each person, um, I look at as an individual, if you are investing in your hair color in a professional salon environment, mm -hmm. I Good really point. would want you to invest in a moderately priced professional shampoo. Okay. Because it's that not going to fade your color. Okay. It's not going to build up residue in your hair. And then you're coming back to me saying, I don't know why my color doesn't look this way. Mm. Well, that's the case maybe for somebody that colors their hair. Well, in some instances, you may have a client that doesn't color their hair. They come in and they get very precision haircuts and, okay. you know, they really need that styling aid. I would say go with the styling aid. So, okay. you know, in, in every instance too, salons are going to probably have a range of styling products mm -hmm. and, you know, that are going to be not the highest end, ex, you know, sure. expense, but, sure. you know, or luxury. So even within um, some of the lines that we carry, we have um, some that are, you know, a shampoo that might be something that's like their basic shampoo with a more moderate price. Okay. And then a high-end luxury shampoo within that product okay. line. That so, you know, and some salons, too, might have incentives for you, like, um you know, 20% off on a certain something for that your feature open. month. But ask your stylist, too, and maybe there is a way that, okay. you know, you can get both of, you know, the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I if you had to say, um, what's your favorite luxury hair product? Oh, okay. Well, I would say right now I do what we carry, the Kevin Murphy line. There is um, more of the... I'd say like um, the hydrating shampoo and conditioner. Okay. They're sulfate free. Um, Which they, is important, right? Yeah. If you have colored hair, it's yes. very important. And the, a little goes a long way. Um, very okay. concentrated. So if you look at the longevity of, you know, the initial price cost would be X amount, but it's going to take you a lot further and there's less waste. If you and, use it right. And, and if you use it right. <clears throat> I'm labeled a heavy hander, you guys, just <laughs> so, so you know. So, I mean, really, if you look at it and, you know, you, you keep track okay. of it. Makes sense. I think, you know, it would, should work for everybody. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, we're on to the next one, which might be my favorite. As a hairstylist, what is your biggest pet peeve from your clients? Okay, that's hard to answer for me <laughs> because um, I don't really necessarily have pet peeves. Um, hmm. But the one thing that I would um, convey to... Uh, Clients that come in, um, don't be so hard on yourself or have unrealistic expectations. Um, as much as I think that 
uh, Pinterest and uh, a lot of images that are on the internet are very, very handy and helpful as a tool for a stylist and a client to communicate. Um, a lot of times there's photoshopping and um, right, yeah, right. and it's just not achievable. And um, you know, so I mean, just don't be so hard on yourself and um, use those tools to benefit you, not to complicate things. Oh, I love Does that. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect yeah. sense. It's so true in fashion too. We mm -hmm. look at a picture in a magazine or even somebody's Instagram shot. And it looks so awesome, and you get this unrealistic view of what then you look like. And I think that holds so true for women, especially right now. I think more than ever, we need to be building each other up mm -hmm. instead of commenting or tearing each other down. And I think that really speaks to what you just said. Yeah. Because I thought your pet peeve was going to be, I want to totally change my look, but please don't cut it. No, not no. at all. Because you can totally change a look without cutting it. There's hair extensions. Uh, oh, you know. I didn't even go that. Oh, I mean, we wait. can go there. What? But I, I will oh, say this. Um, <clears throat> one, if, if I want to just keep it simple and say there is a pet peeve, yeah. Um, turtlenecks and cowl necks are like really hard to work around. <laughs> on styling day, you guys. Yeah, yeah, on styling day. No, but really, it's okay, okay if you happen to have a turtleneck. That's on. We'll, we'll make adjustments. I love that. But, I love that. Yeah, but uh, honestly, mm, okay. I think. You know, use those tools. Um, keep in mind that a lot of things are so not good. actually as you see them. That's so, so good. That's like a hashtag preach. Yes. Okay. Okay, the last um, really big question is um, catered to two different age groups for me. I think that we would be fooling each other if we tried to say that as you do get older, nothing changes because it does. So if you talk about women over 40, uh -huh. what's a great tip for us as it regard as it relates to hair? Well, don't sell yourself short. Don't box yourself in with like what you were used to, f you know, your entire life in your 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you, what you end up with when you are over 40 is a lot of times you know your style. You know what right. what you are comfortable with, right. what you are willing to um, maintain, uh, maintain mm -hmm. and on a daily basis. Um, but also um, let your stylist maybe modify what you have been boxing yourself in with. Got it. Um, you can always tweak your look and you can update it mm -hmm. and still have like that general comfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about for those... Fashion gals under 40. Well, again, don't sell yourself short. You know, you have a lot of, like, getting out of college and, you know, you know, going into the workforce, um, you know, even the stay-at-home mommies. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't box yourself in with that old look that you were comfortable with, your so security good. blanket with, you know, the maybe long That's hair. So um, you know, update yourself, and you don't have to, um, you know wear a ponytail every day. Right, and right. That's the mom. I think that's what I was in. Yeah. I mean, my, my youngest is 20 years old, mm -hmm. but my mommy hair. Yeah. I look at each <coughs> individual client, not with their age, but what really, what their style and what their okay. look is and what they're, what they are willing to do for themselves. Okay. Um, but to be honest with you, healthy hair is for me, the best advice. Um, no matter what age you are, mm -hmm. um, you know, keep in mind that, um, you know, as, as we do age, um, and women hormones, you know, at any age, yep. um, we just need to maintain a healthy hair lifestyle. Okay. And what, just for us as a quick tip, what's, what's like number one in maintaining your health for your hair? Um, diet and exercise, mm -hmm. sleep. So think of that as an internal, um, thing mm -hmm. first. Um, and then, um, don't over process. Um, a lot of change is good, mm -hmm. but going from one extreme to the next and coming back and doing, doing so that. So I can't go blonde and pink and then straighten it and, and get a bunch of stuff all at the same time? Well, um, you can. <laughs> um, however, that's going to be tapping into that budget that you want to <laughs> Right, 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 right. So, um, you know, really just, you know, stay, you know, environment, um, okay. your lifestyle, you know, so stick, you know, think so of good. that first That's and so then, good. and then you can, you know, 
go to the professional hairstylist uh -huh. and they can help you with the external. Uh-huh. I love it. Good. Um, parting words for us. Anything you'd like us to know? Oh my goodness. Um, parting words. Well, um, stick true to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, always think that you know you you should invest in um, your 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 self care your hair and trust your hairstylist that mm. they might know not know everything but um, one thing that I was thinking on the way here was um, I really appreciate when people give me feedback that they love their hair okay but I never want anyone to walk away feeling like they couldn't give me feedback that they changed their mind or um, there was just something that they didn't work or, didn't work for them <clears throat> or they might have a styling question don't wait until the you, next, the next year appointment <laughs> we really want to help you and we really want you That's to be good. satisfied in, in every service and every time that you come in so That's um, awesome. just just stay That's great you know communicate that. even in between um, be if it's a little text um, it can be positive it could be I don't even want to say negative but it could be actually like you know, I changed my mind. I think I want bangs. Okay. So we want to help you. Okay. I love mm -hmm. that. Awesome. So I just want to say thanks to Erin for Thank being you. here. Um, it was, I thought, just in those short five questions, um, some powerful information, honestly. And I think what I loved to be the common theme through that is the same thing that we always talk about um, with Own Your Style when we're when we're doing when I'm doing a video or even in some of my posts is that you have to feel good about you um, and take care of yourself and that's how you truly do own your style and I just thought totally unprompted that's the same theme that we got here from yet another strong woman and another professional. So I truly hope that this inspired you. I hope you loved the video. Um, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I would love to hear any questions that you might have. We'll get those answered by Erin. Trust me, I won't try to answer them because I would, you know, I would say more color, more, more, more. So Erin will be much more sensible and more educated about that, but I would love to hear from you. Um, also, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and also click on the subscribe video on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.